Go on, please. If you've ever switched on a tennis match after it started, the chances are the players won't be in the middle of hitting a ball when you do so. In fact, a Wall Street Journal study on a US Open match in 2013 between Andy Murray and Leonardo Meyer found the ball to have been in play for just 26 minutes and 29 seconds, 16.4% of the official 2 hours and 41 minute match time. The same Wall Street Journal study also looked at a women's doubles match between Daniela Hantakova and Martina Hingis and Sara Irani and Roberta Vinci. That match officially lasted 1 hour and 26 minutes, but the ball was in play for just 16 minutes and 50 seconds, or 19.6% of the time. There was nothing exceptional about either of these matches, and although they are just a very small sample, it does point towards one thing. Essentially, for the casual TV viewer happening across tennis, there's an 80% chance nothing will be happening when they join the match. Tennis has a time problem. It's not the only sport to suffer from this, of course. The figures for ball in playtime may surprise you. Take soccer, for example. 90-minute games plus stoppage time, you would think. And yet, in England's Premier League, between 2014 and 2019, the ball was in play on average for 56 minutes per match. Perhaps unsurprisingly, since the introduction of VAR reviews, this has seen the average drop by another minute. However, 56 minutes is still 62% of a soccer match, much higher than the 20% for tennis. Tennis is not the worst offender. The Wall Street Journal also found that just 10% of a three-hour baseball broadcast involved actual baseball, and NFL matches averaged just 11 minutes of play in a 185-minute broadcast. But tennis can't just point to other sports. It has to get its own house in order if it's to speed up and present those watching live and on TV with more shots for their buck. There is, in some quarters, a drive to eliminate the men's best-of-five-set matches seen at Grand Slams. Those favouring the change say matches would reach their decisive moments more quickly and possibly increase shock results if seeds start slowly. But as we explained in a previous video, the best-of-five debate has more to do with tennis's cult of personality than with effective format change. A look at the existing best of three set matches on the main ATP Tour suggests it won't solve the time issue. This graph, plotting the average duration of ATP Tour hard court matches since 1990, shows a definite trend. From a low of around 87 minutes in 1996, it reached a high of 105 minutes in 2020, the last spike of five extra minutes per match, the result of Covid regulations including requiring players to fetch their own towels. One other notable point on the journey was 2013, when the time violation penalty was brought in, and the average match time dropped by six minutes. Over the years, there has also been an increase in the number of points per match, which seems to roughly correspond with the uptick in match length. But a closer look at the graph shows, at most, a small five-point difference and for the statistics graduates among you, it's an R-squared value of 0.128, indicating a weak positive correlation. One other thing to notice from this graph is that the average number of points per match in 2020 was similar to that in 1992, yet the more recent matches were 7 minutes longer on average. So why is that? Longer rallies, maybe? Perhaps, without clear data from the 1990s, we can't easily compare. But what we do know from a study of rally lengths is that between 2005 and 2015, there was very little change, which suggests some form of stability. It's in the margins where tennis can make marginal gains, specifically by better regulating the change of ends, the shot clock and the warm-up. After the third game of each set, and every two games after that, players are permitted a sit-down of 90 seconds, which rises to two minutes between each set. When time is called, this triggers the 25-second shot clock, 
but players are given an extra five seconds to emerge from their chairs at a changeover. All of this means it can be two whole minutes between the last shot of one game and the first serve of the next. Imagine a best of three sets match that goes to three tie breaks. That's 17 changeovers and more than half an hour of players sat in their chairs munching bananas and then suspiciously inspecting balls before they eventually get round to serving. Of course, changeovers give players a natural break and allow broadcasters to cut away for advertising. However, advertisers tend to use only 60 of the available 90 seconds. Were umpires to call time at this point instead of after 90 seconds, seven and a half minutes would have been shaved off that 2013 murray Meyer match. And broadcasters would get the added benefit of play restarting sooner after their return. Further time efficiencies could be made. Before introducing the shot clock, umpires would give the server 20 seconds at grand slams between points. Now the visible clock affords them 25. Reverting to a strictly enforced 20 seconds would make a difference. In the case of the murray Meyer match, up to another 17 minutes could be saved. Suddenly, we've cut 24 and a half minutes from that US Open encounter. As a result, ball in playtime now goes up from 16.4% to 19.4%. How else can time savings be made? Certainly, umpires can be firmer with players to prevent them from pushing the already generous boundaries. But shot clock code violations are not the only solution. There need to be more stringent rules around bathroom breaks. Riley Opelka was off court for 12 minutes during his recent Canadian Open victory against Lloyd Harris. At the same tournament, Stefano Tsitsipas disappeared to change clothes after just 23 minutes of his straight sets win over Kasper Ruud. He emerged nine minutes later and promptly changed racket too. The match lasted just one hour 14 minutes, so nearly 14% of it was Tsitsipas in the bathroom. I had to go take that break, the Greek player insisted. There's a lot of humidity out on the court and my clothes were soaking wet. It's always more rejuvenating and you feel fresher when you come back with a set of new clothes. I took the chance to go and change my shirt, headband and wristband. Tsitsipas also left the court for another nine minutes after losing the first set against Alexander Zverev in Cincinnati, again for a change of clothes. He was denied a second break later in the match by the umpire. Racket changes could be made swifter with a stern word from the chair, while umpires should also shut down fruitless dialogue when players are unhappy with decisions. The five-minute warm-up before a match has long been a point of contention within tennis. Some, including John McEnroe and Andy Murray, believe it's a waste of time. Players have already warmed up during the day and the lacklustre nature of a pre-match knock-up can deflate the atmosphere ahead of a big match. Chris Kermode, the former ATP president, introduced a reduced warm-up, which cut the time allowed from five to four minutes at the next-gen finals in Milan, but perhaps scrapping them altogether is an even more appealing option. So why is tennis's time problem significant? Well, it's all about keeping eyes on the product both in the arena and at home on TV. Other sports are making efforts to streamline their offering. Tennis needs to make strides too. Shorter versions of the sport have been tried. The most successful was arguably Patrick Moratoglu and Alex Popperin's Ultimate Tennis Showdown. This was based on an hour-long format that had ball in play 37% of the time, more than double that of the Murray Meyer US Open match. How? Well, they cut the shot clock from 25 seconds to 15 seconds and had fewer changeovers, two minutes at the end of four quarters of play. However, the format and scoring system were also far removed from the regular tour, making UTS's ideas challenging to implement. But it is clear tennis must address the delays of game that occur on its watch. Unfortunately, there is no silver bullet that will solve the problem overnight. Still. It's something to be addressed, otherwise tennis risks drifting away from other, more innovative offerings from other sports.